Hey, I am at the Boston Logan Airport flying to West Palm Beach for what could be the finale of a series that has gone on way, way too long. My flipping $400 into a Ferrari series should end in this video. I'm heading to West Palm Beach to buy a Ferrari that I've been chatting with for three weeks. We are right in budget. I have spent every dollar on this car. I'm just about right at the tip of my budget. And then the next scene, we're gonna be in West Palm Beach, Florida. And we are officially ready to buy our Ferrari. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's go finally buy that Ferrari. I'm at the West Palm Beach airport. I bump into a dealer friend of mine from up north, Tony. Tony Alba. What's the name of your dealership? Alba's Auto Sales. Alba's Auto Sales. And look at what he's got on his shirt. He's got the <laughs> shirt, the glasses. You had the first Ferrari I wanted to buy, which was uh, the red one, the gated six-speed yeah, we chatted yeah. about on the plane. We were in like the 50s when we talked about it, and I said no. That thing went up in value tremendously. So did I should have bought that, and that should have been my first Ferrari. You do a lot of Ferraris, don't you? Yeah. You're looking for one now? Me too. I'm so sorry that I sold that one. I, yeah, I wish I bought that one. Yeah. They are the no, thanks for the info. So while I wait for my Uber to show up to take me to the Ferrari, I want to go over the details of this car. Now, I don't want my first Ferrari to buy something that I found at the auction. I don't want to buy the least expensive Ferrari on the planet, which I could have. I could have found the cheapest Ferrari at auction over and over. I do not want to buy a dealer auction Ferrari. I want to buy the car I want. I want a red Ferrari. I want a convertible. This whole series, it was either a California or a 360 Spider because those are sub $100,000 good looking iconic Ferraris. Now, that 360 Spider mid engine is the red Ferrari that I had in mind this entire time. That is what I expected I would be buying to culminate this series, to end this series. Now, Anthony, who you just met over there, had a 355 last summer in a gated six speed. I didn't pull the trigger. I wasn't mentally ready, and I should have. I regret not buying that, and I probably could have made a decent profit off that car, as did the buyer of that vehicle. Now, there are other Ferraris on the internet through dealer only auctions that I could have purchased, including this one right here. Here's another 360 mid engine, but it wasn't the right color, and it had half the mileage but it wasn't the right color and it wasn't the car that I really, really want. Also, I don't know the history and I don't get the opportunity to speak to the previous owner, which is really scary for me because there are a few things you wanna know when purchasing a Ferrari. Has the timing belt been done? What's the life on the clutch, the percentage of clutch left? The timing belt has to be done every four years and like 5,000 miles. So these are big concerns and you need service records, you need history. I don't wanna buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini for that matter with 10 owners, which is typical too because buyers will typically buy the car, drive it, neglect the service, then pass it on to somebody else and they neglect the service as well. So we really don't want another car that's just been passed around from person to person. So I searched high and low to find this car and I did. I found it on a marketplace group, a Facebook group that is specific to Ferraris. Actually, I didn't find this car. One of you guys tagged me in this car, so thank you very much. I found it. I spoke to the owner. He's owned it for 10 years and before him it was his brother's. So right off the bat, that is perfect for me. That is exactly what I want. It's the right color. It's the right car. It's the convertible. We're going into the right season in New Hampshire. He has service records for it. He's owned it for a long, long time. I went through a conversation with him multiple times for over three weeks chatting about this car. He sent me detailed photos without me even asking. He was really, really helpful. He has the original toolkit. He has the original car cover that came with it. He put a new top on it. He really went through this car really, really well. And he sent me some great photos. And what I liked as well was he sent me photos of his garage, which has a collection of cars, which says a lot. He's not just some guy that has a Ferrari parked out in his driveway. He had a Porsche, he had a Viper, he had a Hummer, and we chatted back and forth for about three weeks about this car. Now as a seller, a guy that sells cars, that drives me nuts because I just want the car sold. This didn't drive this guy nuts. He was really, really helpful for me and answered a lot of my questions. And when buying a Ferrari, you need to think about those things. One of the things that really sold me on him was we weren't able to meet when I was in Florida two weeks ago because he was at the F1 races in Miami. So he is obviously a Ferrari enthusiast and not just some guy that wants to own a Ferrari. So I did ask him a few questions, probably Probably more than a few. I asked him 16 questions and I said, sorry, there are so many questions. He answered all of them, which to me blows my mind. The service records are in the trunk. The power top hydraulic cylinders were rebuilt in 2017. The AC is cold. The windows work as normal. There are no leaks. He has two OEM keys and an Enzo key. He has all the tools, the books, the inflator, the red cover. The last time the clutch was checked was in February of this year at 79%. And he did the oil change. All manuals are in the trunk. The flashlights are there. The windscreen is there, all three. He had the radio code. The top was just installed. Rear brakes were just replaced. There's no sticky buttons. All of his buttons and switches and handles were done from a guy that services Ferraris. And then he showed me 
photos after photos after photo. So this sold me on the car and I want this car and he knows that. Now he also knows me from my Ferrari series because we chatted about that and he knows that I'm on a tight budget. He was willing to meet my budget, which helps me a lot. So now I get the car I want. He has a car that's sold. He actually left for the summer to head up to New York. The car's still down here with his son. Everybody wins and now we're on our way to go meet his son to go hopefully buy this car. Hey, shout out to Lyft as well because I did say Uber a minute ago. I use Lyft way more than I use Uber. Lyft, Uber wanted over $40 to send me to this guy's house. Lyft, 26. Every single time I check the prices, Lyft is cheaper, so shout out to Lyft. Not even sponsored, I just wanna give a shout out where shout outs are due. Now there are a few other things too before you get to see the car alongside me is I did pull a Carfax. I didn't want just an auto check, which is what I pulled originally. I want a full detailed Carfax where I can see the history of the car from start to finish. I figured out what Ferrari did it was serviced at Fort Lauderdale of Ferrari. I called them. I called West Palm Beach Ferrari where it was serviced at. I even found a repair shop that does exotics that was servicing it regularly and reached out to them. And he was happy to give me info on the car. He knew the car personally. He knew the owner. And he said he just had it in recently. Anytime the car needed anything, he was the guy that worked on it. So that right there sold me again. So this car just keeps constantly selling itself. And I didn't want to just buy it and have it shipped up to me. I want to put my hands on it first because it's a lot of money. Let's go over to the car now. It is so beautiful here. This morning it was freezing cold and windy. We're here. So this is the car. I love the wheels. Have you driven it? Yeah. So he's away and his son came to help me out and let me take delivery of the car. Here it is here. The Scuderia Shields here. Love those upgraded wheels. He did a great job. It is beautiful. And I love that he's got a car collection too. Oh, that's better. Yeah, to be quite honest with you, I've, I've only had a Ferrari from the 90s. So this is slightly newer and I don't really even know how to start it. I think I know how. Activates your alarm. Yep, nice. Alright, so lock and unlock. There's a light here that tells you if you I just saw Oh, that. if it's ready? Yeah. And then to engage it and drive, do you shift it from the paddles or do you put it in auto or it depends on if you want to shift with the paddles or oh, and now it's in auto, it's on the Yeah. But then if you want to put it first, put it first. Okay. And then neutral is go paddles. Hold them back. Both of them. Yeah. All right. Reverse it just it doesn't go back, it just clicks. Okay, and is there's no park, right? It's emergency brake as the park? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. It was just on neutral in the garage. Okay, my Maserati had uh, no park. Do you know how to work the top? Yes. His son's on the phone trying to figure it out for me while we're at it. The floor is completely dry where the car was parked. That's a big deal. So anything leaking, obviously, would have been on the floor because this is the spot for that car. While the top's in this position, I was told to check in here for hydraulic fluid leaks. There we go. The top was too new and it was increasing in the right places, so it was holding the top on. That's what that is? Yeah. So we have the cover for the car cover. We have the tool kit. We have the owner's manuals. We have service records, new belts. Looks great. Okay. All right, so push once. The red light goes, the red light's blinking, so push it once more. The red light's off. Great. Okay, window switches are right here. Ah, great. Emergency brake. So if I don't want paddle shifters, do I just hit auto? And it'll engage? No, nope, that paddle. turns auto off. Yeah, you just need to put it in, in the drive, I and guess. And that's your traction control? Yeah. Is it, are you constantly having to shift, or because I'm in auto, I don't have to shift right now? You don't have to shift. Oh, oh you son of a... Power seats? Yeah. Power seats. Best to go right? Yep. Bad timing for the rain. Yeah, at least it's not the rain we had up south today. Oh, is it worse? Yeah, and with those clutches, I don't like it when you slow down, but don't do your stuff. So it would prefer me downshifting? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, when you're in auto, just leave it go down, and then it's like the old cars, the 60s, you need to actually go down to the stop before it goes to one. I don't know. Uh, explain that again. So if you try to go from two to one when it's not, it's still running, it won't, it's gonna have a hard time going. So here's what's great. All the buttons look 
Amazing. And he's looking for the title bill of sale. Here's what I did. I got a certified check for 80,000, 82,000. And I'm gonna sell him the other 4,000 just in case there was something he didn't mention that wasn't described. I hate when people negotiate and then show up with less money. So like we pre-negotiate and then people will go, oh, will you take this? No, we already talked about the price. This car is everything he said it was. So I think I didn't get like a great deal. 86,000 isn't a steal. Plus it's gonna cost me 1,400 to ship it plus the flight and the hotel and everything. So I'll be into it 88 or more when I'm finished with it and then we have to service it so i didn't steal it but i don't want a cheap ferrari a cheap ferrari is an expensive ferrari i wanted a good ferrari and i was willing to pay for it here's another thing i was sold on the leather on this car is in excellent shape usually they crack here and then they get really really dirty this is not and especially this outer bolster is still in excellent shape so i don't even care that this car is forty-five thousand miles it is in better shape than cars i've seen with 15 and twenty thousand miles and just like that over two years of hard work i officially have our $400 Ferrari. We've had Mustang Cobras, we've had Dodge Vipers and Aston Martins and Bentley Continental GTs and countless Jeep Wranglers and diesel pickups and Mustangs and Camaros, but never a Ferrari. And what you're looking at is my $400 Ferrari. It is officially over. We're done. We own a Ferrari for $400. There were lots of hoops to jump through, lots of ups, lots of downs, but we finally done it. Now let's go enjoy our $400 Ferrari. And just like that, I officially own a real Ferrari. Ferrari. And I'm not talking a 2 plus 2 456 look like a Ford Probe. I'm talking a real red Rosa Corsa mid-engine Ferrari. And I have, I feel like Christmas, better than Christmas morning because it's not just a cool car. It's an end to an idea that started two and a half years ago to a goal that I've officially achieved. This is a cool feeling. This will be my first time ever really getting on this car or a Ferrari in general. <laughs> As far as speed goes, it's all right. I'm spoiled by my e-tron GT. As far as sound goes, that was amazing. Wow, that is cool. That sounds amazing. <laughs> does it pop on a downshift? It does not, it's just smooth. paddle shifters you're supposed to let off the gas to shift like you would a manual transmission i just realized something i gave him the receipt to a cashier's check and not the actual cashier's check lucky i'm honest because he agreed that i paid him in full so tomorrow i'll go to his bank and deposit the check oops that was a big deal this car sounds incredible in between two buildings it just like reverberates off everything off every wall <laughs> Wow, look at that car. I just, sometimes I wish I could go back to my 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old, even 25 year old self. I just got chills just thinking of that and just say like, hey, one day you will have that car. Hey, one day you will drive something kind of that you love like right now as a younger person. You're gonna own that car one day. Like dreams come true. Truly dreams come true. That is so amazing. Problem, I can't figure out how to lock it. So like if I hold this, right now the lights are going off. It sounded like it locked, but I unlocked it. If I hold it again, it blinks, it's still, I can't figure it out. The next day. Good morning, not 100% today because I had a couple Chardonnays last night. Still in love. Now, what was really cool, my Airbnb has a valet. The valet allowed me to park literally right in front of the building. He moved some cars last night so I could park it here because I can't figure out how to lock the doors. And safe and sound stuff. That is just, come on, man, for real? It's not even a tree above me. What the heck? Now the previous owner did tell me he removed the PPF, the paint protection film off the front of the car, but did not remove it on the hood. I guess all the PPF was kind of cracking like this. And this is why I don't like PPF. You pay six to $8,000 for a paint protection film and it cracks. I hope you guys can see how it's cracking. Now the reason he didn't remove it on the hood is because these stripes are on top of the PPF. So I, he actually gave me a second set of stripes, just like this, the exact stripes, so I can remove the PPF and put the new set of stripes on. All right, let's see if I can do this. I turned the uh, alarm off. Then I flip this up. Roof. Can't do it off my remote like my Corvette. Granted, my Corvette was 20 years ago. 
Now I think I have to tuck this in because it's brand new, so it's not seated properly yet. See how it sits in here? It has to go down. The sensors will recognize that and not shut the roof. It's a beautiful day. I just want the top down. Come on, man. I couldn't figure it out. I give up. It's a beautiful day in West Palm Beach and I have to drive with my top up, whatever. I don't leave till tonight, so I have the entire day. So I'm actually going to the auction, the dealer auction. If you saw my video about all the supercars at the Palm Beach auction, that's where I'm heading to right now to see what we can find. I bought my CTSV there last time. Who knows what I'm gonna end up with today? Maybe nothing, maybe something awesome. Don't even know, we're gonna find out and that's gonna be a whole new video. Hey, look at that, Trump's jet, Trump's airplane is right there. I guess he's in Mar-a-Lago right now. Welcome to the Mannheim Palm Beach dealer only auto auction, where today I will be taking you inside of a dealer auction to see what we can buy. Hopefully not buy anything, I already bought a car. I don't need to ship two cars, but we will see what's in here. A few hours later. I'm looking everywhere in this parking lot and I do not see a red Ferrari. Is what I thought 30 seconds ago. I was terribly stressed because my car is gone. Perfectly hidden behind these three cars. There it is. The auction is over. I made a video about the auction that's gonna be completely separate. This Ferrari, I'm taking to my grandmother's house. It's not far from here. I was going to leave this car at this auction and have the transporter pick it up from this auction, which would have been perfect. I scheduled it a week ago, have the shipper pick it up Thursday. I get an Uber to the airport car's probably gonna be home within a few days. Well, the shipper kind of dropped the ball. It's not getting picked up today. So instead of leaving it here, waiting for things to get snatched, I'm gonna bring it to my grandparents' house, take them out to lunch. They're gonna bring me to the airport. I get to drive my Ferrari a little bit more and I get to know that it's safe, nestled in their garage instead of sitting at an auto auction while people sit in it, open their doors, check it out, like I do, and then play with things and worse, steal things. Different note, still can't figure out how to lock this door. It wasn't locked. I hit the alarm, I locked it. Can't figure out how to lock it. If you guys know, please tell me in the comments. That right there is driving me. Knocking farts. Ah! Hey, look at this. That is a camera or a sensor or something. That is definitely a camera. What does that go to? I have a problem. My car won't go in gear. I am nothing. I hold this, nothing. Shut up. Oh, I'm in reverse. Okay, there we go. We're in gear. That's really scary. I don't know what that's all about. It's alarming. I'm driving this car. I can feel every single bump in the road. Now granted, it, it is lowered. It's on bigger wheels and low profile tires. I can feel everything. And the other thing, like the AC is cold, but it's not, I'm, I don't feel chilly. I'm still slightly sweaty. And uh, there's no cruise control. So I get it. Like I'm not in a luxury car. I'm in an exotic like, super car, but there's no cruise control. Ah. That's slightly odd and also annoying. All right, I'm on the highway, there's no one around. Let's see how fast this car can get to 65, because that's the speed limit. Well, it doesn't feel like I'm going 65. I'm in Mexico anyway, isn't that what the YouTubers say? Oh, while I'm in Mexico, I'm going 100 miles an hour. I'm not going 100 miles an hour. I'm saying that's what YouTubers say. I learned something while driving up to my grandparents' house. This car, zero to 60, not wildly fast, but going, let's just say 65, it goes 65 very smooth. Like you don't know that you're going 65 when you're really, like it is just so smoothly, wildly, like high speed fast, crazy. All right, so for the people wondering where my affinity, fit, whatever, my love for cars came from. Welcome to my grandfather's Corvette. That's how I got into Corvettes a long, long time ago. And now we're at Ferraris. Grandpa, Yes. here are the keys. I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. There's a little button right here. See that button? Yeah. You're gonna push that button and that will like unlock the alarm. And then we can go in and uh, drive it. Oh, all right. I like my vet better. Like that, we own a Ferrari for 
flew in yesterday and flew out today. The car's being shipped out tomorrow. I should get it like at my house in the next week. And I am pumped about it. This is a long, long series and it's not finished yet because we have to drive this car. We have to learn about this car. We have to figure out two and a half years of work was actually worth it. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you followed all the way to this day, thank you so much. This was a blast and we have finally achieved our goal. This is awesome.